Welcome to Let's Get Metaphysical, the show that stretches you beyond your five senses. When you are looking for your next step on the path into the unseen, we've got you covered. Join epic adventure seekers and level up your game with your host, reality magician, Allie Bierman. Greetings, epic adventure seekers. Welcome to your guide to demystifying your world. I'm Allie Bierman. You're listening to Let's Get Metaphysical, connecting heart and mind. Today, I'm going to be spending time just you and me, introducing you to the why, how, and wherefore that I came to be involved in metaphysics and why my whole life is focused around the awareness that I get in living in my spiritual background. First, I got a question for you. Have you ever felt like life just happens to you? If that's you, I made a gift for you. Step in a new direction. In this quick read, you'll begin to discover your power and control every day in your life. The link to download your copy is in the show notes. Now, why is metaphysics the way I live and run my life? world. Well, actually, we all do. It's just most of us are doing it out of our awareness. Going all the way back to when I was a little kid, I always knew that I was different. I didn't understand why I was different, but I knew enough of my differences to not mention them to anybody. Here's the kind of thing I knew when I was so about three years old. And I got out of bed and I went in to my mom and dad who were in the kitchen talking right by my bedroom. And I asked them to please turn down the radio because I couldn't sleep. And they looked at each other and then they looked at me and said, there is no radio playing. Here's the thing. I put myself to sleep composing music in head all my life. So as I got older and became aware of more kinds of music, I'd compose. I was a clarinetist. I'd compose clarinet concerti, woodwind quintets, just all kinds of really fun music that I'd use. And I'd fall asleep while I was playing it in my mind. I always wished I could stick a recorder inside my mind. I was actually 16 years old when I learned that not everybody walks around composing music in their head all the time. I was with a friend and I mentioned something about, you know, that music that you're playing in your head all the time. And she looked at me kind of funny. And she said, I don't play music in my head all the time. I said, you don't? You don't hear music? You're not composing music in your head all the time? And she just looked at me and she said, no, I don't think anybody does that except maybe you. I was 16 years old when I discovered that. There are things that you know not to talk about because people look at you kind of funny. Interesting thing that happened when I was really, really little. The exact moment that my dad was transitioning, in other words, leaving this plane of life. I happened to be looking at the clock. I was in school that morning, and I had just gotten the news that I was going to get to take violin lessons in school. And I was so excited, and I was telling my dad I had a violin, and he was going to teach me how to play. And then I got home and learned that was the time when he left. Interesting, don't you think? The exact time I noted it, I can still see the clock in my mind when I was sitting in that classroom. Well, shortly after my dad's funeral, I was outside and looking up in the sky. I've always been someone who spends a whole lot of time looking up in the sky. And out of nowhere, I saw a silver form. Don't know what it was, but it came out of nowhere in the sky. And it went, disappeared back into nowhere in the sky. I was absolutely certain that was my dad's spirit. And I know that after my mom transitioned, 
I saw her golden light, but it was clear and obvious to me because she was in the room with me. So those are some early experiences that I had. I knew not to talk about with other people. Interesting, because we're all born with these abilities, with these capabilities. And then when we mention them to our parents, they tell us basically, you're seeing things, you're imagining things, and basically stop. I was really, really grateful one day when I discovered Shirley MacLaine talking about her book, Out on a Limb. Because here she was talking about this whole spiritual reality. I had always known inside that I didn't have words for it, I didn't have an explanation for, but she did. And she wrote lots of books and I read most of them. And finally, what I was going through in my life made sense to me. So that was a big jump for me. The next thing that happened that was a big jump was my daughter was always a dancer. And as a serious dancer, she'd frequently get hurt. And someone had shown me, if you just put your hand near somebody and you allow it to happen, heat will come out of your hand. So during her teen years, I spent a lot of time putting my hand wherever she hurt and we could both feel the healing energy. So this was a message to me. There are many things in the world that I can't see that are very real. Moving on to my next experience. When I was working in crisis care as a mental health therapist, a very dangerous client cornered and attacked me, hit me in the head a number of times, leaving me with a really bad brain injury because of the repeated blows to my head. My brain was bouncing around and my entire body, every system in my body was impacted. But what was a major outcome of that? I couldn't use my eyes because you don't see with your eyes, you see with your brain. I couldn't use my eyes because things were so incredibly distorted. I just got a horrible headache and unbearable dizziness when my eyes were open. Other thing that I couldn't do was follow a conversation. I got hit right at my jaw, and guess what your TMJ is involved in? Your memory is one of the many things it's involved in. I had no short-term memory for three whole years. Do you know what that means when you don't have a short-term memory? It means when somebody's talking to you, by the time they get to the end of their sentence, you don't remember how they started the sentence. You didn't know what they were talking about. So it was really hard to follow a conversation, which also meant I couldn't watch movies. I couldn't listen to audios because nothing made any sense. I couldn't follow anything. The universe was forcing me to go within. That's when I learned how to meditate because as far as I could tell, I didn't have a choice. There was either go within and survive or be forever frustrated and exasperated because I couldn't function in the world the way I used to. I learned to meditate. And what was really cool about that was I learned anytime I had any kind of question, anything I needed to know about, I would just ask the universe to give me the solution during my meditation, and it always happened. And after a short time, I realized I could ask for help even when I wasn't meditating. I had lost my sense of direction. I used to be able to go any place without a map. I just always knew where to go and how to get there. Well, after the brain injury, if somebody gave me a set of directions, I could reach my destination, but I couldn't reverse the directions to get home. When I went to the brain rehab center every day for my rehab, it took me half an hour to get there. It took me at least two hours to get home because I'd go round and round in circles having no idea where I was or where I was going. So one day I realized I could ask the universe for assistance. So I would tell the universe where I was trying to go 
and I never made a wrong turn again. I was at a friend's house out in the country. I didn't know how I got there. I just asked the universe, please show me how to get out of here and get home. And that's what happened. One night I was trying to find a party and it was dark out and it didn't do any good that I had written directions because it was dark in the car and I couldn't see any street signs because there were trees and no lights by them. So after riding up and down and up and down and up and down the main street, I asked the universe to please just take me to the party. And that's exactly what happened. I turned this way, I turned that way, I turned this way, went right into the parking lot and found the party. See, the universe is talking to us constantly and we just need to learn how to recognize the messages coming at us. How are those messages coming at us? Pieces of things that we read, book titles that we see, going to the library and picking up the wrong book but getting home and opening the book to exactly the page with a solution to your question. It's overhearing a little piece of a conversation. It's going by a road sign and catching just a few words. Or as one of my friends experienced, she said she wanted to learn Spanish. And one day when she got into her car, turned on the radio, and there was a Spanish-speaking station on, she said, I did not tune that in. Don't know how it got there, but it was clearly a message. It was time for me to learn Spanish. Now, all of this energy that's very real in our environment, all our relationships, because truly we are all connected, we are all one, what we can't see doesn't mean it's not real. And it applies not just to us as humans. We're all connected. When a plant comes into our existence, a tree, the grass, the animals, the pets who come to us, they all come to teach us lessons because we learn from each other. I had a cat come to our house. I'd never been a cat person. But Samantha adopted us and Samantha became the best friend in the whole world. She created some really, really cool, really unique games that she play with me. And when she transition she got sick and she left i was really sad and i didn't want another pet for a while and then one day my at the time husband said look there's a cat adoption let's go i said i'm not sure i'm ready he said well come on let's go anyway so when we went into the cat adoption these two cats they were raised as brothers they were different breeds but they were raised as but brothers and both of them were very attracted to me and it was very very clear that i was going to take both of them home now here's what's so amazing when I got these two guys home, they started playing the exact same games that Samantha had made up. And I knew that Samantha's spirit was present and communicating to both of those little guys. So that gave me another piece of information that all is one. There is no finite happening when you die, that we are eternal spirits that go on and on. And since then, I've heard a story of someone who came back as the son's pet. There isn't the hierarchy of life forms, and you might be a human in one life, and you might be a different animal in another life, or maybe a tree or another a plant. I have always felt very strong vibrations from trees. I spent very much of my life in the woods and climbing up in trees. I get powerful messages of events that happen in areas with trees. People say, go and hug a tree. I'm not fond of doing that just because there are so many ticks where I live. I still get communications from the trees and from the flowers and from the plants. And you do too. You just aren't aware of it.
When you become aware of all the life in your environment, it's going to enrich your world so much. It will make your life so expansive and at the same time easier and calmer. Allowing the truth that your heart communicates infinite distances, whereas your brain sends out energy that only goes about four feet. You and I and everything that exists, we are spiritual entities. We are divine spirits choosing a human experience or a plant experience or an animal experience. But who we are is an eternal divine spirit. That's what metaphysics is all about. That's how I experience it in my world. And before I leave you today, I knew that I was getting these messages. They were always coming at me from my guides and my angels and from the universe and from my spirit. And so I asked, how do I speak directly and hear those messages directly? No, I don't hear voices. I get strong feelings. I get directions. Do this, not that. Go here later. So I asked for guidance on how to speak directly. So I ask a question. I don't have to speak it out loud. I can ask it in my mind. I get the response right away. I get it from my guides. I get it from my angels. I get it from my spirit. I get it from the universe. I get it from the universe itself. And you can too. Ask me how. And I'll show you. Thank you so much for joining me here today and taking a step into my world that I trust allows you to move into your world. You've been listening to a talk on the Wilder side. Thanks for tuning in to Let's Get Metaphysical. Be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss a single episode. And while you're at it, please leave a rating and review and be sure to share it with your friends. Tune in every Monday for more exciting insights and wisdom on life beyond your five senses. Until next time, take a small step in a new direction. Start now.